if I see it flying around the boat, I'll just remind you. It's like, hey, you need to have your hand on that. Um, now, as I mentioned before, it's a team sport, right? If we work together, we listen, and we do what the guide says, like, things aren't going to get very weird. Uh, but when communication breaks down, when one half of the boat does one thing, the other half does another thing, we're not going to move the boat, we're going to start hitting things, and that's what I'm about to talk to you about when things get weird. We want to stay in the boat, but sometimes when things get weird, we hit something hard, um, like a rock, there are a lot out there, you can slow motion fall back. Luckily, you've got this thing that's going to help you float, but the thing that we need to remember, the creek is really shallow. All of you should be able to touch in most places. We do not want to do that. Think of the bottom of the river as lava. It's not nice. It's not going to feel nice on your feet. When you run along like section of the railroad, the interstate, basically the bottom of the river is blast rock. It hasn't been worn down yet by the water. It's sharp. There are a lot of rocks that don't fit well together. If you try and stand up in the river and your size 10 shoe goes into a size 6 hole, it's going to lodge there. And then the water, which is really fast, is going to push you down. We call that a low oxygen environment. It's not good. You might think you're strong enough to be able to hold, your up and hold yourself up, but that is usually not the case. Do not be that person today. If you fall out of the boat, fully out of the boat, you're going to get in something called whitewater safety position. And it looks like this. And you don't know what it looks like. I'm not going to sit down with my butt hurts. But <laughs> you get your toes and your nose to the sky. You get your toes so that they're downstream. That way, if there are any obstacles or rocks, you can push off of them. Your legs are kind of like a spring. It was going to feel a lot better if you push off the rock with your feet instead of smacking it with the back of your head. Okay? You are going to be your number one rescuer out there. So what I say for people is like most of the time what ends up happening when we see people exit the boat is you're looking at the scenery and we're not paying attention. Your guy says bump. I'm like, wait, what? The thing is, is when we hit something and the guy calls bump, we don't know if it's going to be gentle or if it's going to be the tilt world. If the tilt world hits when you're not expecting it, you're probably going to find your butt in the water. The easiest thing to do would be to grab onto the lapel of their PFT. Do not grab their hands and wrists. You can't accidentally hurt them. Grab them by this lovely thing here and pull them back up. The one time that you're allowed to lose your tea grip is if the person is right next to the boat, you can reach this out to them so they can grab. If you thump them in the chest with this part, it's going to be nice and slippery. They're not going to be able to grab it and they're just going to keep floating down the river. Now, if you are the person who suddenly finds your butt in the water, luckily, if you look at our boats back there, there is a red line around the outer rim. We call that the OS line, the onboard safety. Some of you adults might be laughing because you're thinking of something else. You can call it that too. Grab onto that line. If you are close, you're going to need, you're going to want to try to get to the boat. I say number one is you. Remember to get your feet up. Number two is where's my crew. Your guide is always going to be pointing in a positive direction. As I mentioned, there's a lot of old mining equipment, glass trap, and things. The shore is not always safe. Look to your guide. They're going to tell you what is best to do. They might be telling you to get to shore. In which case, you're going to get on your belly and do your best Michael Phelps impression and get to shore. Otherwise, they're probably going to be, most of the time, they're going to be like, get back to the boat. You're probably going to be close to it. Swim to the boat swim to another boat. All good options. Um, what I don't want you to do is like not do anything. If you are not doing anything, I'm going to ask if you're okay. It's a double tap on the head. I need to see it back unless you are experiencing a medical emergency. If you have, you do not swim or are not a good swimmer. If you have type 1 diabetes, any cardiac conditions, any health problems, issues with like your joints, I need to know. Your guide needs to know. I need to know if you're able to self-rescue. If you are not able to self-rescue, you're experiencing a medical emergency, you're going to give me this symbol. If I see this symbol, this is like, I am calling 911 once I get here to get to the shore. So if you're a little beat up or scared or cold, that is not this. That is this. If 
you something has gone terribly wrong and you cannot swim, that would be a miss. You need help. And that's I'm going to go into rescue mode. At that point, if you are not doing anything to save yourself, this is when we might see one of these. It's called throwback. We don't use these very often, but you need to know what to do in case it comes your way. First of all, whoever's throwing it is probably going to be aiming towards your face. Don't be insulted. It's to get your attention. Do not grab the bag or you're going to find out exactly how much rope is in this thing. You're going to grab the rope. You're going to hold on to it. We'll find the end here. What I never, ever, 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 ever want to see, like, do not wrap this around you. Do not wrap it around your waist, your hand, anything. Two hands, hold it over your shoulder. Once this line goes taut, if you have your back to your rescuer, this lovely pillow is gonna come up and it's gonna protect your airway. If you forget, that's okay. You're probably gonna remember because when the line goes taut, if you're facing your rescuer, all that water is gonna go in your face. Hold on to the line, they're gonna swing you into shore. This thing is not always like your safety method. If, for example, you're late to getting to this line and now you're getting swept into the next rapid, your guide might be screaming at you to let go. In which case, you're going to get away from this thing. Bad news bears, you don't want to be rolling through a bunch of white water like trapped up in this. Um, it's better to ride it out and then try again to get to shore. Once again, very rare that we see this, but it can happen. I mentioned bumps and how the tilt roll happens. That's usually how most people go out of the boat. There are some times where we do a bad job paddling. 